If you haven't got problems, I feel bad for your son. I got 99 problems and a bitch ain't one. <laughs> Welcome to the Nerds from Work, your weekly escape into the world of geeks, nerds, and ordinary people with extraordinary abilities. I'm a host, Jason Miller, and with me, as always, I've brought a band of degenerates to save the cheerleader and save the world, Josh Tankersley. Ita! Ha! <laughs> Nuruik Baje. You're broken. I can fix you. And Brandon Miller. Nathan! <laughs> oh god <laughs> say that was it I know that's I what can. everybody remembers oh that show. Fly, Nathan. Oh, but Nathan I can fly Nathan it wasn't a dream <sighs> oh, right. yeah you flew I just want to help you people flew. I lost oh, control god. Okay. I'm trying to catch you so, and I lost control <laughs> if you guys didn't pick up on it uh, we are filming this on Monday, the 21st, and there was the probably the biggest letdown of the last 100 years, the solar eclipse. Didn't happen anything Spider like the show Heroes. <laughs> Spider-Man 3. Okay, 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 Brandon. Second <laughs> top five. Top five. Second, <laughs> top five. Oh, I, can, I can top that. Easily, easily top ten. Yeah. Easily top Deadpool. ten. Deadpool. Um, we're recording on Monday, so I might wake up tomorrow and be the fry man. I don't know. Uh, oh, um, oh fry. <laughs> All I know so is the powers I get, I better fly. I really better fly. <laughs> <laughs> like, no joke. If, if, if I gained a power from heroes, like, it would be so cool to have, like, Peter Petrelli's powder. Where you can take then, everybody's. Because then it's like, what if Tank had, like, some stupid ability? And then I'm standing next to Tank, and then I get a stupid ability. I think I would just, uh... yeah, okay, we're going to do this over. I'm Jason Miller, and uh, this is Take 76. Fair reference. That's the power I feel. <laughs> um, just jump off right. of the oil thing. Yeah, right? I'm not jumping off anything. <laughs> we can push so. you if you want. Just say the word. I'm too pretty to be doing these things, guys. All right, guys. We do it every week. What have you been up to? Tank. So I was told not to say watching Defenders, so I'm not going to say that. Um, <laughs> say that. What I'll I have been doing is uh, working a lot, so my life's been pretty crazy. Um, so nothing. Like I've just been life and work, and it's been kind of horrible. Um, like <laughs> we did, we streamed church. We didn't even get up and go to church. We just streamed it because we were tired. So Dude, me too. <laughs> so we just did home and stream. We just streamed the service from the house. So uh, yeah, I mean, caught up on the soul. So reading Hunter X Hunter, reading Black Clover. Um, I mean, also all my uh, Dragon Ball Z super is like ramping up every week. I can't wait to see Goku. Of course, it takes 20 weeks to get to yeah, a fight. Dude, literally, this whole tournament, uh, this whole tournament takes place man. in like 45 minutes, and we're already like, I don't know, 15 episodes in, and there's still 35 minutes left, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty stoked about it. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, Nuru, what have you been up to, buddy? A lot of things, a lot of things, y'all. Uh, first off, I got pretty nostalgic for a few old comic books at one point, so I started reading... Um, don't even know if you guys know this, but I got into um, some Asterix comics and then got into some Tintin yes, comics. I know that. And then I got into the new 52 Justice League and started going back from the beginning, just going back through the storylines from there. And I'm not allowed to say I was watching Defenders, so I was watching... Um, I have to admit, I figured I was going to need some insight into Iron Fist, but I couldn't bring myself to actually finish it. So... <laughs> I found some online recaps and read those instead, so yeah. Hmm, Wikipedia, <laughs> nice. All right, Brandon, what have you been doing, bud? Wikipedia is the world's uh, leading source of true knowledge. Oh, yeah. Um, leading source of, I've changed eight <laughs> things in there. 
You tell him. Find it. My science teacher is an assassin. If you figure out who my science teacher is and look him up on Wikipedia, I changed that in high school. It was great. Um, but I started Voltron um, nice. this weekend. I nice. can say I watched it three times, and I'm not through the first episode. <laughs> I keep falling asleep. I don't know. I don't know. Is that good that you watched it three times? Like you've attempted it three, it three times. Three chances. Or like, dude, he said I he fell asleep sick, each time. So I, I keep going to, to sleep. He fell asleep each time. That's I'm bad. getting somewhere. Oh, it's a three people. <laughs> it's a three people. That's just bad. I'm get, getting somewhere. Uh, Game of Thrones is awesome. Um, I did that. Uh, I got Jason's Comicsology account finally. I haven't. Uh, bingo. Yeah, could I you didn't dive into that yet? But. At some point. All right, if you want it, uh, Jason. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, don't um, worry. I'll put it. My up. password <laughs> is password. It's right here. Jason, Username, you can tell us. I'll just password. edit it out. Don't worry about it, man. I'll, I'll edit it. You just go ahead and tell us. Um, yeah, password is taco. taco. <laughs> I can believe that. <laughs> I finished uh, the rest of Silicon Valley because I love that show. And you saying that reminded me of it because guy Big Head on it, the one of the characters. They're like Big Head, give us your your. Uh, like login information for Harvard and stuff. And he was like, what's your username? And he was like, password. He was like, no, what's your username? <laughs> he was like, yeah, my username is password. <laughs> he was like, what's your password? He was like, it's also password. <laughs> 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 if anybody watches that show, Jane oh, Yang man. is the funniest person in the world. Go watch that show if you That's haven't. Funny, it's all the episodes are 30 minutes and it's 10 episodes a season. There's four seasons. So it's actually super easy to just blast through and it's hilarious. So yeah, I did watch that. I guess that falls into nerdy stuff because they're coders. The show's about coders. So We can't so finish cool. one episode of Voltron. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've right. finished one right. episode of Voltron mm. if you watch Silicon Valley. I, I'm pretty sure everybody Dude, on this podcast at least would love Silicon Valley. I started for the Silicon Valley. I fell asleep in the first episode. Yep. <laughs> well, first, first, Nuri, you have to understand what they're talking about. So there's like a threshold of how like intelligence exactly, you have to right? <laughs> yeah, you're talking way below my level, man. It's crazy. I had no idea. Yeah, what we have Elon was. Musk on. Uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, this week, oh, it was exciting. Um, so Dark Knight's Metal came out this week. Uh, I picked up both prologues to that and the first issue. So I started reading through it, and um, I was on, uh, what is it? I can't remember what the first, it's like two prologue, ep- like two prologue issues and then like the original. So I was on one of the earlier issues, and uh, I was looking at the art. I think it was the very first one. I was looking at the art, and I was just like, oh, man, they have, like, four artists in this book, and the book is only, like, 30 pages, and I, and I hate it when they do that. Like, keep the art the same, right? Like, unless you're telling different stories and then you use different artists to, like, accentuate each story. But I was just like, uh... So I was looking at it, and I was like, man, this looks like Kick-Ass. Like, and, and I loved the book Kick-Ass. Like, don't get that Kick-Ass 1, Kick-Ass 2. I hope they do another run of Kick-Ass because... That is an awesome book. It's an awesome movie. I must say, the first movie was good. I loved it. The, dude, the movies were great. But um, So the art is very like comical. Like, it doesn't take itself too serious, right? Like It's making fun of superhero books because Kick-Ass is not a superhero. And like the villain is just some spoiled brat kid. And it's like, okay, like you know, it's a lighthearted kind of feel-good book that has like an adult tone to it. Now imagine that guy drawing Batman, and you're like a huge Batman fan. Nice. Not cool. Not cool. So <laughs> John Romita Jr. Just stick to Kickass, dude. <laughs> stick to Kickass. Stay, stay out of my Batman comics, man. Just stay out of those. But the story, right? Because everybody knows I'm a huge story guy. The story thus far. Yes, I saw the Justice League form Voltron. Was it absurd? You bet your sweet ass it was. <laughs> it was so ridiculous. I was just like, sweet what Christmas. the fuck? But, but, I do love that book. And I am going to keep 
you know, going, it's one of those where you get Dark Knight's Metal 1, Batman 478, Green Lantern. Thir- so I am going to read the entire series. Comicsology makes it very easy to just go through and find like which books and just, you know, go about it. Comicsology sponsor us. But <laughs> and then I wouldn't have to share the stupid password. Um, I don't, by the way, Comixology. <laughs> I don't share it. Sponsor um, us, but I give my account but, away. But, but sponsor yeah, us. Yeah, look at that. Sponsor us. Give us like X amount of credits so that way we can talk about your shit on our show. <laughs> um, so, plug. I've been reading that. I love it. You guys should definitely pick it up. Uh, Brendan's going to try and steal mine. I know Nuru's going to try and wipe my tablet. Swiper, no swiping. Uh, if you have kids, that makes sense. But um, other than that, I went to a brick and mortar store this week, this weekend, and uh, I actually went in looking for Dark Knight's Metal because I'm a huge fan that I'll buy it on Comixology or I'll buy it online. And then to support the artists or whatever, if I enjoy the cover or I enjoy the art or the story, I will buy an issue of it. Um, so I went in there. I purchased the Titans comic that Brandon put up in our uh, Hangouts. Group chat. Yeah. Yeah. I bought that cover art, which is a variant cover for a Titans comic and where I have Titans, the original like first appearance of Nightwing. I'm going to put those up in my office like next to each other. But while I was in the store, I asked uh, the guy behind the counter, if you guys have never been to a comic store, go talk to the guy behind the counter. They're typically pretty friendly people. Some of them smell. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> wow. Don't mind the smell. It's okay. Um, but ask them, you know, what they would recommend. Uh, I just asked the guy, like, hey, man, you know, what would you recommend this, this month? And uh, he actually recommended this, Aquaman. So the reason he recommended it was for the art and the story. And I have not actually read a lot of Aquaman Rebirth. I read Aquaman New 52, where he formed the Outsiders and all of that. And that run was amazing. They made Aquaman no joke. Uh, I'm looking forward to Aquaman in the Justice League, so I figured I'd give this a chance. And uh, it was it was worth the purchase. It was worth it. I love the art. The story is good. Everything is a very solid product there, and uh, I do enjoy that. So, you know, hey, Titan Comics in Duluth, thank you. Thank nice. you for that recommendation. And I spent money there, so you can thank me. But <laughs> last thing, last thing. And Brandon, you are going to be stoked about this. Uh, if you guys are into Magic the Gathering, which I've said that Brandon and I are, we play Commander. Commander 2017 drops this week. Uh, if you are listening to this on Wednesday, it comes out Friday. So go to your local game shop. Typically, Walmart's have it, Target's have it, whatever. Uh, I think it's going to be like 35 bucks, 40 bucks, but you get a 100 card deck. It's pretty awesome. But in that, I have been tweaking my cards. So, Brandon, I am getting mm. all my Commander stuff together, and mm. uh, our trip to Europe is going to be interesting. By the way, this is my card box. It's super sweet. But, yeah, that's what I've been doing, preparing my uh, Commander stuff for when Brandon and I take a... Which colors? Hours-long flight. What? Which oh, co- uh, so this, this year, Commander 2017 is dropping four decks. Um, one of the decks is a dragon tribe so it's all dragons uh another one so their theme this year is tribal so one is dragon tribal that's always wizard tribal i enjoy tribal uh one is wizard tribal one is uh vampire tribal and then one is cat tribal so it's all cats so it's pretty interesting i don't know if i want Meow. I don't know if I want cats or uh, Twilight yet. You need to go so, buy it right meow. Right yeah. meow. Um, so, yeah, my week was full of nerd stuff. And, uh, yeah. So, now, let's break it down. Let's get into the reason why people probably clicked this show in the first place. Not to hear us talk about nonsense and stupid shit I've been doing all week. Let's break down... The Defenders. <laughs> Insert horn noise, noise here. It's, yeah. <laughs> Insert explosions. Um, so <laughs> we're going to do The Defenders a little bit different. I've seen a lot of people already reviewing it. Um, we were talking about it before the show. A lot of people were doing reactions to it and shit like that. We told you guys last week we were going to do two episodes. Uh, it's going to be a little different. 
this week we're not going into movies. We're not going into all sorts of different TV shows. We're just going to break down the Defenders, uh, and we're going to actually do the first three episodes. If you guys have seen the whole series or you've at least seen the first three, you understand why. If you've read a lot of the stuff online, you'll also understand. But um, the reason we're going to break it down, first, we're going to do an overview of what we think of the series and uh, you know whether we were satisfied with the product or not. On episode one, episode two, and episode three. Those will be in our show notes below. Um, and we're going to do it that way because Netflix, you've set it up to where I can actually share an account with uh, family. Well, someone in my family actually watches this show, believe it or not. Well, not Brandon. Brandon's, Brandon's in the show. I don't watch the show. Members, <laughs> other members of my family watch the show. One of them, I'm not going to say who, Dad. Hello, uh, Father. Yeah, hello. Uh, <laughs> actually watched it on my Netflix. So I went on. I was talking to Brandon on uh, Saturday, and I was like, yeah, dude, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to crank up the Defenders. I'm going to get a start. Who the fuck has been watching the Defenders? <laughs> How am I already done with episode two? But he stopped at episode two. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you've only watched two episodes. Because the third episode is killer, but that's why we're going to break it down. Episodes one, episodes two, then episode three. We're going to have spoiler alerts. Um, Just so one there, giant this will be spoiler, a spoiler alert. I'll put it up. One giant spoiler. But we will, Just, we every will time break it, and I'll say, hey, this is going to be episode well, three. Yes. So that way, if you haven't seen that, uh, and Naru, do not go any further than episode three. I will try. Every time Jason's face pops up, you should just put spoiler alert over his face so we can't see him. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert. Please think. Please think. <laughs> I'll, I will double your pay. Just, uh, yes. Yeah. I'll, I'll triple your pay. Oh, thanks. Oh, God. You, you guys get are too paid? generous, Anything. really. Oh, man. <laughs> Just throwing money around. Make it rain. All right. So, uh, overview, right? Overview of the defenders. Um, tank. Thoughts on the series as a whole and uh, kind of just to piggyback off we did last week, you know, did it kind of live up to what you were, you know, what you wanted? So, yeah. So like Jason said, I watched through episode three. I won't give any spoilers here. Um, so up until episode three, for the most part, I was very uh, impressed. Uh, literally I had to, my wife had to rip the remote out of my hand after episode three so we could go to bed because we had shit to do this weekend. Um, <laughs> if if nothing else, at the end of every episode, you just want to hit play, like go to the next one. Just go ahead and start because like it, it always stops somewhere. Not not necessarily like a cliffhanger, but it's always something like, oh my god, what happens next? I, I, I think that's all of the Marvel like Netflix shows though. They're so good at that. Yeah, it's yeah. it's really good. and I, and I think this one even to another degree. Like every time yeah. it got to the end of the episode, I was like, but I have to know what happens next. Mom's like, no, we have to go to bed. I was like. Damn it, being responsible. <laughs> so, I was impressed. I will say the the thing since we since you brought up. So last week, I was hoping they would do something better with Iron Fist, uh, and I don't see it. At least not yet. At least not in the first three episodes. It's still very much like I can only do it by myself. No one can help me. I have to do it by myself. I'm like, oh, stop doing like this. It's oh, yeah, I'm not so. I don't know, maybe later it gets better, but as of right now, I'm not impressed still, and it's kind of annoying. Um, the fighting's a little better. <laughs> I'll give them the fighting's a little better, but... And I don't know if it's the writing, I don't know if it's the acting, combination of both, because the rest of the characters are fine, um, or even better than they were in their, own, in, in their series, so... But... Brandon, I want to hear your best uh, Danny Rand impersonation. Danny... It's me, Danny Rand. <laughs> <laughs> Danny Rand. From Rand I, it's, Industries. You don't remember me? I'm Danny Rand. <laughs> He's even got I, the Danny Rand shirt on right now. Yes, yeah, he does. Hanley aft, dude. <laughs> uh, all right, Brandon, you're already giving us your Danny uh, Rand thoughts, bud. Yeah, I... Along the lines of Tank, I love it in terms of, like, the cliffhangers and stuff like that, which I think all of the... Um, Netflix original series, not even just Marvel. Most Netflix original series do great at that. Um, and I think, I think whenever you're like making something for that platform, um, 
it's it it it's good for you to to be able to do that because you're able to just binge watch everything on Netflix because everything comes yeah. out all at once. So I think the net Netflix original series as a um, model, as a yeah, just as a, a, a outlet, people are doing that, and I think that that's good. Um, I like Danny Rand better in this one uh, because. Yeah, he did have that where he was like, I, I'm doing this one alone. I'm going into the CEO's office and I'm going to wear a suit for once, but still wear some like knockoff Dude, Adidas. Those shoes were sick, though. Yeah. No, so the white nurse, no, like, on terms of shoes, the white nurse, isn't that her name? Night nurse? Night nurse. Night nurse. Yeah, night, yeah. night nurse. Um, I thought she like wore all white or something. Anyways, um, in the, the first Daredevil series she wore a pair of gravis um dylan readers that are super 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 rare like in the scene where she had gotten uh kidnapped and i was like dang if i could get those shoes um <laughs> you want to ip dylan reader they're Just not so clear. They're you wanted shoes. you wanted to get the night nurse's shoes yeah yeah so everything you caught they're, uh, they're not women's <laughs> shoes they're skateboarding shoes they are skate shoes only in men's sizes so they're not girl shoes but she wore them and they were sick. They were great. Dylan Reader. I yeah, am size. impressed. All right, that's a whole different type of nerd stuff right there. It's like, <laughs> yeah. So backing out of this rabbit um, hole. Anyways, yeah. So um, yeah, he did. He did uh, have that. Like ha- he does have his moments where he's like, "Oh yeah, I need to do this alone." But I feel like, um, feel like dialogue between him and uh, Luke Cage was really cool. I'll give that. And then. Hours. Episode three, I'm not going to spoil it right now, but like that has a lot of really cool stuff in it uh, between them. And I feel like you, you start to see the spark of him understanding him, like coming out of his ways of like trying to do everything on his own and, and having that kind of stuff. Um, I like. So I, I like each character's section more than their individual series, except for maybe Daredevil season one. I like I like Daredevil in okay. this one more than Daredevil season two, but Daredevil season one is still like right now as of episode three. Daredevil season one is still like top for me because I just yeah. loved season. I I also think it might have had something to do with like because there wasn't anything else like that yet. But yeah, along what Tank said though, I think all the other characters and and Daredevil season two, I think this is better so far um, for each person. So yeah, for sure I like it. All right, Nuru, thoughts. All righty, start the clock. Uh, <laughs> no, this is no just spoilers. Over, just spoilers. <laughs> no spoilers, no, dude. No, nah, but uh, seriously though, my going into this, I wanted to see if they could make this dynamic work because each show has its own this had its own distinct voice. Each show had its own distinct mm-hmm. vibe. You know, you had the reluctant hero. You had the hero who felt he was compelled to do what he had to do. You had the hero who really, I don't want to do any of this stuff, but hey, I have powers. And you have the person who just takes her powers granted, but she's damaged. I'm like, how are they going to mix all this up and come up with something really good? And also, stylistically, like this show is one of those shows where um, I'm not the most perceptive when it comes to certain things in terms of the visuals of the shows but you guys may not have noticed it but if you ever want to do it just literally go back when you're watching on netflix just fast forward through the whole thing and you can literally just visually from the basic the color schemes you can see red blue yellow red blue yellow green so it's kind of fun to see it's kind of fun to see that because you can see that they're using that to tell the stories and what they do in terms like a friend of mine actually put this on facebook what what they do in terms of being able to use the ambience of the place to kind of tell the story daredevil shows up at a point you have the red background so he's thinking it's calm but there's other time when he shows up and you can see the lights flashing boom 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 it's like a warning something's going on so little things like that little cues people pick up on that thing on those things secondly um i agree that at the beginning you can tell like Danny Rand, because I just wanted to see, is he going to be the same idiot that he was? And it's like they all understood the criticisms because I'm not going to spoil anything, but let's just say throughout the whole show, people go out of their way to point out how dumb certain things he does or thinks or says are. I'm talking his friends, his opponents. It's just a funny thing. Um, Having said that, though, 
he does kind of grow as a person in terms of his dynamic with these guys. He's instrumental in actually getting them to realize that they probably should work together. Um, and there's other things in the show at the beginning and all the way through the end that I feel like they successfully made us believe that these guys would work together. They would, they would actually do it. That was, it was, it was, they succeeded there. Um, as far as the tone, I like the fact that you could also see that each person's motives were part of what drove the story forward. You know, Daredevil's motives was a big part of this. Um, Jessica, I'm guessing not so much, but I'm still trying to figure her out. Ironically, I'm actually beginning to relate more to Jessica than anybody else on the show, which is a kind of a strange thing to say. Oh, man. Because I kind of feel like if I had powers, and I feel like I would probably be as nonchalant about the powers as she is. Because she is so nonchalant. Like she, will, she does not want to use her powers to do anything special. She doesn't want to spend her time getting attention. But she will happily like, use her powers to do something. What you would normally do by protesting she would just use her powers and solve the problem and look you in the eye and say, what? <laughs> you know, what? <laughs> so that's really what I feel I would do. I relate to that a lot more than I do pretty much anybody else on the show. In some way, so. Um, so the Defenders, right? I've watched three episodes. Um, somebody had to stay strong. It wasn't going to be Nauru. Um, <laughs> so, I wouldn't even pretend to do that. So I've watched three episodes, and thus far, I think that uh, this is a good show. Uh, it's funny that you were saying that about the colors, Nuru, because I was just about to say that. Uh, in the in the intro, you know, they introduce each character in a different color, and and you can kind of see that each scenario is set up a little different, and and blending all of these together, um, it kind of reminded me of the first Avengers movie, how they blended each character and every anything before that. It was like you can't have that many characters they're not going to blend well you're not going to do that and then avengers knocked it out of the park and almost had like that hey f you yeah. where they're fighting that big alien and it literally panned through every single one of them like that oh, oh, I'm, that here. oh I'm here too. oh i'm here i'm here too oh i'm here i'm here too oh i'm here i'm here too and it's like the defenders i was curious if they could do it but uh you know you start and it's a little slow and you're like okay and then you start to see it, and it all starts growing, and like the net starts getting, you know, woven, and you're just like, oh wait, this is about to happen. And then when it finally, when they come together on the screen, you're just like, this is the moment I've I've been fucking waiting for, yeah. right? Like this is this is it, this is it, and uh, it was it was awesome, dude. I, I was just watching it, and I was like, <laughs> awesome. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's good. Um, I know not everybody has got a chance to watch The Defenders. Nuru and I were actually making fun of someone today who thought they had to watch all of the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. before even getting into Daredevil. I'm not going to say your name on the show. Shout but, out to you, though. Uh, shout out. And uh, never watch. That. That's wrong. Never watch. I don't know <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> I don't know who I not watch that. The that person should no longer be your friend, whoever told you that. But um, So now we are going to go ahead and jump into a spoiler alert. So you, person we were shouting out, should probably go ahead and stop watching right now. If you guys don't want to hear any spoilers about the Defenders, we are going to go over the first three episodes. So if this is where we cut you out, go ahead and skip to the end, and we'll give our outro if you want to hear it. If not, see you later, because we're here to spoil some shit for you. So... We're actually going to go over episode one, the H word. Shh. Don't say it. H word meant something completely different for me about like seven years ago. Can't get charged with it if they don't know what you're talking about. But <laughs> hazing, hazing, guys. It's not, it's not that bad. Mm. It's okay. Everyone does it. But <laughs> thoughts on the first couple episodes. We're going to go over episode one first. Um, so in episode one... Uh, that is when we get our first views of what everyone is doing in the Defenders verse. Let's call it that. I like that. Defenders verse. Brandon doesn't. Brandon doesn't like that. No. Oh, the defender. Uh -oh. Defender verse. The defender verse. <laughs> it just merge them Whatever, together. Dude. It makes everything yeah. better. <laughs> dude, the, the, the defender verse. 
the Defender uh, 1000. The Verse El Defendedoro. If I, ooh, I like that. The Verse El Defendedoro. Um, yeah, so it's kind of like a French. You see, you see where everyone's at. Um, we've got, uh, it's, it opens with Iron Fist, uh, which I thought that, that was an interesting take, as Iron Fist was the one series that tanked. Um, so it opened with Iron Fist chasing through the sewers, chasing down the hand, uh, trying to, you know, take care of the hand after losing an entire society to the hand. But then we find Luke Cage. Luke Cage is getting out of prison. Um, well, you, you know, that was pretty awesome. But so my thoughts on the first episode, I like the fact that they opened up with Iron Fist uh, trying to give that redemption story, right? Like each one of us said it last week. Please fix Iron Fist, right? And I feel that they're trying to give him that redemption, right? Like in this season, in this series, they're trying to give him redemption. Um, I like the fact that Luke Cage... You know, he goes through this whole process. They're like, oh, it looks like you're paper pushing work. And he just hands them the handcuffs. Like, he's like, oh, no, it's cool. Like, basically just saying, like, yo, I could have left any time. Yeah. Like, it's okay. Uh, Jessica Jones, I still don't like her. And I thought it was really <laughs> interesting. I thought it was really interesting that Matt Murdock was now being a, uh, like, public. a defense attorney. Yeah, pro bono. Yeah, a pu- I'm sorry, a public, a public defender. So nah, he's just doing bono. it. To, he's not defending. He's yeah. uh, what do they call it? Pro bono charity case lawyer. Or something. Whatever. Yeah. So he was just doing it out of the good of his heart. To, but then you find out he's doing it to stay busy. Right. Like he's trying to like not think about. So Electric, in this, really. Yeah. Well, he's not. You find out that he's actually given up being dared up. Yeah. Yeah, he, he he's wins trying his case to give up being trying, right, yeah. yeah. He, it's like he crack, wins baby. his case it's and like then he crack, goes, baby. Yeah, that's why I uh, roam the streets at 1 a.m. That's why we got to finish this, guys. I got to get back out there. <laughs> Violence, I can hear it through my headphones. Um, so I thought that that was really good. You know, he had a dinner at the diner or a coffee or whatever, and, you know, they were talking about him actually giving up Daredevil. And at the end of him Daredevil Karen, season dude. two, I don't really remember him saying he was going to give it up. Yeah, me neither. So it was interesting to me, and, and I like that they presented it that way, that he had given it up because of, like, a conflict within himself. Like, he didn't want to be that person anymore. Like, he want, or he didn't think he wanted to be that person anymore. He was trying to change, and he wanted to be better for the people around him. And I really like that. Because, just like Batman... Uh, in the Dark Knight trilogy, right? Where he tries to give up being Batman because it's hurting the people around him. Like, there's that internal conflict. Like, it's who he is, but he's trying to change because it's hurting the, everyone around him. So he's got that internal battle, and I, I loved that. I loved it, loved it, loved it. Iron Fist was still like a, meh, character. Jessica Jones, I still hate her. And Luke Cage, I thought he was extremely, he was extremely interesting. In that episode. So, uh, thoughts on episode one, Tank? So, what I, I kind of took... So, so kind of two things. And I'm going to go back and start at the beginning of the episode. I like, I do like that they opened up with Iron Fist. Because, actually, if you go back even further. The opening credits, right? Credits? You get, yeah, literally. You get, opening credits, you get the flashes of all the characters. But it's their overlaid what looks like a city like grid. And so, like, you, you get, you understand from the credits that this show is 100% about New York. Everything is, is coalesced around this city. This is their yeah. city. That yeah, can I, can I say something about that tank Ooh, real yeah. fast? Yeah, I want to say something after that. I, I really hope that the... I want to say something too. I don't, know, I don't know New York that well, but, like, I hope that each um, area, like, because you have, obviously, Hell's like, Kitchen, Kitchen, Harlem, Harlem. but, like... I hope that is the neighborhood that they like outlined. Sure. That would be so sick. And, and I'm pretty sure. I'm we sure that, that they probably thought that. Ooh, they probably, probably thought of that when they were making the intro. But um, that that would make it like really cool. Sorry. So my my piggyback real quick. Uh, each series, each Netflix uh, Marvel series has done an excellent job to outline that show and what it stands for in 
the intro like yeah. in that little clip. So Daredevil, you have blind justice, right? You've got like his father's boxing gloves. You have the roses. You have all of these things that mean something to Daredevil. Luke Cage, same thing. Jessica Jones, who cares? Um, <laughs> Iron Fist was the only A one that think. I honestly watched it, and I was like, this is terrible. Like, this is the most like racist thing ever. Like, you, it's it's a show about martial arts, and instead of showing who Danny Rand is, right, like his parents' plane crash and, like, Kun Lun and, like, him training and all this, what did it show? A yellow figure doing flips and kicks. That's all it showed. So, like, Wu-Tang music. Like, are you joking me right now? Like, are you serious? Everyone else gets, like, these super, super detailed intros that mean so much and they're so, you know, meaningful. How's that and you get, like... Racist against Dude. Asian people in there. Uh, a yellow, yellow martial people. artist. Yeah, and but everyone else gets like a super detailed. Whatever, Naru. Everyone <laughs> else gets like a super detailed intro. Saying. What does he get? Nothing. Because the show is not. Then, then it's then it's opposite racism against the white man. Boom. <laughs> Drop the mic. Yeah, well, but why is that I'm just saying, like, I guess it's just about bad show, writing. This show had nothing in it. The writing didn't have anything to do with the fucking right, intro. So Shut anyways, up. anyway, so yeah, intros are all great except back to interest. my point. Bunch of yes. slackers. So the intro is cool. I like how it gave you exactly what the show's gonna be about. So then, and then I like how they open up on Iron Fist because again, we see him chasing the hand, and it shows again. Okay, this is this is what the show's about. This is about these guys fighting the hand. That's what this show's gonna be about. The whole thing is always going to come back to the hand. So I like that. So I, I like I like I like the framing of the show. This first episode, that I thought they did a very good job of showing. Okay, this is what the show is going to be about. This we don't have to guess. It's exactly what's going on. Um, God, man, I had some other points, and you guys started talking, and I can't remember what they all were. Sorry, I just wanted to bring up the. Neighborhoods. So, um, I, I do. I'm not a fan of the of Iron Fist dialogue unless he's with Luke Cage, which I don't think that really happens <laughs> to, to episode. Two. Not in episode one. It didn't so, happen. Um, so, spoiler for episode two. Sorry, but um, you knew they're coming together. Surprise. So, his I, I, his dialogue when it's like just him and and Colleen Wing or whatever. I it felt very much like the Iron Fist show, and I was not a fan. I do like how it looks like he's getting better with his power. Um, and so that at least intrigues me and we, we see that more and more as the show goes on even just in the few episodes we've seen um but i'm excited for the show i like i like this this first episode it kind of takes you, you kind of have to take a minute on this first episode and kind of get your bearings if you especially if you haven't like rewatched or reread the other shows to kind of like remind yourself where you're at it takes a few minutes to figure out, like, oh yeah, okay, that's right, this, that's right, Luke Cage went to jail, I forgot about that, and oh yeah, Murdoch's over here doing this, like, I had to, like, remember all that kind of stuff, but other thing I did, I was gonna say, I like, to me, I got the impression, we remember at the end of Daredevil Season 2, Elektra dies, and Murdoch thinks that, that she's dead, like, he, he didn't, like, that, that's what he is, and so when he's talking, because he talks to the priest in the first episode, right, and, uh, yes, and so, yeah. When he's talking to him, like Electra comes up like almost immediately, and you can tell that he's very torn. Like he he doesn't like he's mad because it, it drove away all of his friends, it drove away the, the woman he loved that he currently loved, the woman that he used to love. Like he 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 just he's tired of giving up everything for the suit, and so he, and then, so that's the impression that I got was he's like you know what I'm gonna give up the suit, but then now he realized that he can't just put it away. Like it's not something he can just turn off. That's something. This, it, he is Daredevil. It's not something he can just turn off. So, first episode I was excited about. Uh, those, those are my, those are my thoughts about it. All right, let's jump to Brandon. What you got, buddy? Yeah, I. Uh, a lot of what you guys already said. Um, I thought the actor playing Danny Rand has grown as Danny Rand. Um, seeing him in this series already and I've, I'm I'm there watch I've only watched the first three uh, episodes um I think he within the first three episodes I think he's already out acting himself in the first series of just the Iron Fist series um we're 
poking fun at him saying his name earlier, but uh, he never yeah, said yeah. his name in this new series in the first three episodes. Spoiler alert. He doesn't say Danny Rand. No, yes, um, he does. But not he doesn't say his full name. He says Rand Enterprises. I think he says it when he goes into the CEO. Thing. He, he but anyways, says it, when, but that's not his episode. Yeah. yeah, but anyways, he's already out acting himself, and I think that's awesome. I think he's really growing in that character. Um, my dog is being wild for no freaking reason. He keeps bumping into everything, and it's driving me nuts. Um, but yeah, so I. The first episode, what I took away from it most, and everybody's been talking about the whole color, the color thing, which I'm yeah. a huge fan of that, which I brought up in the Spider-Man episode as well. Um, I'm, I'm huge into like looking into that stuff. Uh, in the diner scene, the in diner scene. I actually blame you for me noticing that stuff now. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, it's a it's a, a neat thing to notice. No, a lot is, of people. I'm just it. saying you yeah, pointed yeah. it out. Ever since I'm like, huh. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Your it point. helps you yeah. un- like fully understand. I'm growing the into this character of being. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so in the show. is the diner scene the first episode or the second episode? I can't remember. First, first. The diner scene first. was yeah. the first. The yeah. diner with Matt Murdock, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's um, first. And in, in that scene, the the uh, little metal pieces right next to their heads, they always had red on it, and there was red outside, but. If you if you pay closer attention to all of the Daredevil scenes, um, in the Netflix series, he doesn't have yellow on his suit, but there's yellow in all of the the scenes, and it's so sick. That they're paying, like they're paying tribute to it. it it's always what? like a gradient from like yellow to red, and it's it's pretty cool. Dude. Pay attention when you nice. watch it next. Time. I, I got it. There's gotta, always like a hint of yellow out. somewhere, and it's like oh that's cool. But um, yeah, if you if that's you really so like cool. look into like color theory and stuff like that of like what the colors mean and, and everything. Um, you'll understand why they have to put a little bit of yellow over on, t- on top of the red and, and stuff like that. But what I took away most from the first episode wasn't the colors, actually. It was um, them kind of repainting what each series stood for. So they really, I, I felt like they did a good job in the first episode going through each character, setting up the mental... Uh, obstacles that each character was trying to fight in their um series so like daredevil yeah. now is 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 basically an addict um to the suit he's addicted to it he's he can't get away from it and it's kind of looking into that mental aspect uh danny rand is having uh, ptsd and, and and those kind of flashbacks and things like that on the plane and and and, and it's diving deep into those things and resetting what these characters actually mean um and, and not really what they stand for, but a lot of what their character is built off of. And I think the first episode did that really well in a really, really fast pace. For four people in one episode to kind of yeah. like lay everything down. Hey, look, this is what this person's dealing with, and this is why. This is what this person's dealing with, and this is why. I think they did a pretty good job um, yes. at that. And, and that's what I was most excited about in the first, in the first episode. That's pretty awesome. Like, I didn't even think of it that way. But, you know, you saying, like, daredevil is an addict to the suit right yeah. like that actually is a very fitting description like to yeah, me he's going through yeah, like like he's going through the, withdrawals the, yeah, yeah withdrawals the same like roles that the addicts go through he, yeah. he opens that's, the suit looks at it awesome. he, he looks at the suit and he's like oh and then and then foggy calls and he's like oh what i'm do- what am i doing he has that kind of regret of why yeah. am i looking at this now that someone else kind of called me out on it things like that like um, Luke Cage getting out, trying to find his place in the world, and he's like, "Oh, I know I need a job, but this is more important." And it's like, now, now, where do you go? Do you go back and like, how do you fit back into society? Like, that's a thing that people who yeah. are coming out of jail have to deal with, and and all the characters are going through this, and they're all dealing with it different ways. Like when it opens with uh, Jessica Jones, she's just straight up in a bar, passed out in a bar, and she's like, "Yeah," and it's like that's how a lot of people a lot of people in the world that's how they deal with some of these things it's like and her friend was like yeah you did something great and you're punishing yourself for it people do that that is a mental state that people go through and i think that's really cool that they're painting all these characters completely differently with real world situations of of mental states and not necessarily that's just awesome. look i'm big and buff and powerful and this is Captain what America. this person says and and yeah i like the mental aspect of things 
And I think that's really cool that they're they're kind of highlighting some of these uh, uh, illnesses that that don't get played out um, in other media. I think that's really cool. All right, so uh, Naru, I'm gonna start with my funny thought. Um, am I the only one who thinks when they well thought when they did the the opening sequence where they kind of descend from regular life down into the sewers? I just thought teenage mutant ninja turtles. <laughs> <laughs> you are the old bro. Just <laughs> these, guys the, <laughs> these guys are fighting in the these guys are fighting in the sewers and everything. How you know, dude. with all the weapons. <laughs> ah, turtle power. What? No <laughs> turtle. Anyway, yeah. Um, Gotta be faster, dude. Brandon <laughs> kind of jumped, kind of stepped onto a lot of the stuff I was going to point out because, like I said, late pizza. <laughs> 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 like you yeah, see. Okay, here's the thing. Um, stylistically, I'm getting – I probably want to go back and watch Daredevil again because there's something a friend of mine said on Facebook where she's talked about – because I think she just started watching it. And she's a visual person. She's actually into movie making and stuff. And she talked about the fact that you don't even see it all the time until you look. But you see how, for example, Wilson Fisk is always shown in black. And then you see when he's with the girl who's finally getting it to know him. She's finally seeing who he is. They always contrast them. You can see he's in black. She's in white. She's in black. Until and, if you watch until, that series, eventually they switch and she's in black and he's in white. Exactly. Yeah, but yeah. the transition point yeah. comes where you see the part where she actually takes him and he wants to get dressed. And she goes, no, don't. Dresses him. Yeah, she takes his black yeah. suit and says, put the gray suit on. She's changing who he is as a person because he's a scary guy and she's making yeah, him more human. <laughs> But I, awesome. I will say I he thought was about one of my that. Favorite villains. Yeah, he, dude, he absolutely was. is. Like I tell you, they got to bring him back. But anyway, She's to jump so into um, episode one of Dare Defenders, I start because of that. I'm looking at this show from a different perspective. I'm like, exactly. What's the mental state? Where are these guys right now? Daredevil. I wasn't thinking addict. I was thinking more repressed. Like <laughs> the guy was so repressed. I want to do this. So like. I didn't think of it as an addiction. I thought of it as more as somebody who's you're you're pressing, you're suppressing your true self. This is really who you are, and you don't want to accept that. And because of that, you sometimes act silly when you, you know, see things. But this is who you are. And uh, Jessica Jones, she is clearly. I mean, I don't really, I haven't really looked into how rape victims, you know, act and deal with life. But you can tell this girl, she is thoroughly destroyed like even though she's been a hero yeah. she's been mentally raped by this guy like she is so not here yet she is against everything she doesn't care about anything she pretty much would probably kill herself except she doesn't want to you know but you can see the pain in everything she does like you said she pretty much just wakes up in the bar which was a pretty funny scene though where she, yeah. she goes, you know, and if i was the bar if i was the bartender and i was like hey it's morning and you break my glass Oh, jeez. Well, yeah, no, I'd be so angry. She was just like, oh, man, it's morning, and then just broke the glass. I'm like, you, you, could, you didn't have to do that. <laughs> we can agree that he probably knows her out. hours and, does, and knows he would come out the worst for that, but still. Uh, and yeah, then yeah. you have uh, Luke Cage, which, if in my opinion, Luke Cage in the show is the most grounded person there because he is literally <laughs> – he is literally – the first – in Luke Cage's series – he was rejecting who he was. He's trying to hide it. I don't want to do anything. He's sweeping streets, sweeping uh, the bar, um, the barbershop, you know, stuff like that. In this episode one of the Defenders, dude comes out and straight up tells Foggy, "Look, I'm moving forward," you know, and that's what he was told by Pops, like, "Hey, you got to move forward," and he's moving forward and he accepts who he is. This is who I am. This is what I can do. I want to help people. Who can I help? Who's there to help? I, I will. I will give my two cents on Luke Cage in episode two because I think that's where it came full circle, right? For me. But you can see that they take the time to first of all show us, and I like that where everybody was, and then all of a sudden, boom! There's this big event that kind of brings them back together and affects everybody. There's something that happens and affects everybody. And I, I mentioned this before in one of the, the episodes we did before, where I talked about how they they took the time to really sell Sigourney Weaver as a very imposing person because oh, yeah. I couldn't see it initially but I was wondering who is she that she can intimidate Madam Gao yeah, Gal, you, that's what I was gonna say I'm like, Madam Gao yeah, is bad at it fears yeah. nobody like she would sit down look at Daredevil and think oh kid <laughs> like she had you know she looks at Iron Fist and thinks <laughs> you can tell she's not intimidated by anybody now, and then all of a sudden she's told 
by Sigourney Weaver finished feeding the birds. I want us to change the time, speed things up. She just, okay, whatever you want, boss. That was really impressive for me. And even the visuals, you can see little things. Like they deliberately, Sigourney Weaver is tall. She's like, what, 6'1"? But she's, definitely she's, about one. She, she's about she, six one. She's about six one. She's tall, but she is not six foot one. Look it up. She's about six one. I um, think so going I think she is, one. dude. Trust me. Look it up. Here's the point, though. She, How would I trust you if you don't? Well, do you do your thing? She's walking. The first time we see her, she's walking into this hospital. Even in her weakest moment, she's imposing. Like she's walking in, and she is head and shoulders taller than everybody. Oh, six foot room. zero. You're wrong. Six foot zero. <laughs> Dude, I'm off by an inch. She's <laughs> short, dude. Dude, you don't, Anyways, don't you dare so short. say Ripley is taller than she is. <laughs> Ripley will shoot your ass. But having said all that, I guess for me, I like the fact that they established where everybody was very quick. Luke so, Cage is yeah. cool. He's moved on. Jessica Jones is literally, she is in pain. Like she, She's got PTSD, whatever it is. Daredevil's repressed. Oh, and my man Iron Fist. Dang. Dude, like when they show him, I'm thinking, uh, okay, does he have a new haircut? <laughs> it seems he, he does. does. He does. He does have a new haircut. Yeah. Okay, because I hated the old one. Good. Then I'm watching the show. His fight, they hit it in darkness. I thought, great, they want to hide the fact he can't fight. <laughs> okay, move on. That's true. And then all of a sudden, um, he's doing his thing. Where he's feeling so bad he has nightmares. I don't know. Maybe it's because I didn't finish actually watching the show, but... His pain through most of these episodes so far does not feel earned to me. Like the reason, here's the thing. If I see you with your kid, I see you with your spouse, I see you with your friends, I see you with family, I see who you love, and you love these people. You give me a reason to believe you love these people, and then you lose all that. Yeah, oh, my God. His, his flashback is the end of Iron Fist. Yeah. Well, here's my point, yeah. though. So technically, that, an entire they city the, died because of him. Yeah, here's my point. When, yeah, when so he I get that. Here's my point. That's that's PTSD worthy. What did they show us in his show of the city the whole time? It's him being tortured, Flashbacks. him being beaten, him learning. There's nothing that shows him connecting to people. Nothing that showed well, him still, really. Feeling. That's so I just his feel family, like, right? Like he, that's where he grew up. Good, bad, good, bad, it, or indifferent, right? That that's where he grew up. That's his family. I get yeah. it. So, I hear it. Here's what I'm saying. On a mental level, I get it. I'm just saying show, not tell. I don't feel like they took the time to really dig into that. So for me, it felt a little unearned, but I understand what they were trying to communicate. So um, I, have a, I, have a little, I have a cool little point. We we're talking about colors, right? And so if you notice, Sigourney Weaver is always in white, which to yep, me, yep. She, she does not see herself as the bad guy, right? She's doing what she's nope. doing because she thinks it's what has to be done. She thinks she's... She thinks she's the hero of her own story, which I thought was kind of cool. So she right. does think she's the hero. I think she actually. Whoa! I mean, I go for it. Sorry, back up. Yeah, so, yeah. Hey, okay. Yeah. Hey, hey. All right. So that about wraps it up for episode one. Uh, if you guys haven't seen episode two yet, that's our synopsis on episode one. Synopsis two, simply called "Mean Right Hook." A mean right hook, and oh, okay. Luke Cage takes a mean right hook. Like yeah, just straight up. Yes. So, so in episode two, uh, we've got, you know, everyone there. There's a like a tremor, right? Like a um, small earthquake, and it comes out that it's not really an earthquake. It was only like a couple hundred feet deep or something like that, and it was aimed at um, Harlem. No, Hell's Kitchen. So, yeah, it, Hell's Kitchen. Hell's Kitchen. it started yeah, in Hell's Kitchen. Why was Luke Cage playing in Harlem? I mean, it, it got Harlem, no, the ep- but the, the epicenter was okay. Okay. yeah. Yeah, the Hell's epicenter Kitchen. was Hell's Kitchen. I'm sorry. So it was aimed right at Hell's Kitchen. This is the episode where you actually start to see these individuals and how their paths are starting to get tied together. together, Everything is starting to slowly get tied together. So uh, in this episode, Jessica Jones witnesses a um, a murder suicide. Like I, I don't even know. Like it was like if you don't kill yourself, I'll probably kill you. Right. Um. Uh, which, when we get to episode three, I'll, I want to cover this, but it, it was really confusing for me when I watched episode three and this one. It was weird. 
Um, so that happened, the murder suicide for Jessica Jones. She goes down to the police station, and of course, she needs a needs an attorney. The architect. Oh, she, the, yeah, the architect. I'm not saying it was a straight suicide. No, no, no. But it was a murder because Electra would have fucking killed that dude. Yeah. Like, let's be honest. So instead of getting killed or being forced for information, then he killed himself. So uh, Jessica Jones was witness to that. She goes down to the police station. She's down for questioning. She needs an attorney. Who walks in but our good buddy, Matt Murdoch? Pew! Uh, Say no more. So then uh, <laughs> Iron Fist is chasing the hand. Surprise, surprise. Uh, comes across. Uh, I'm going to clean up uh, and, you know, spraying some kind of chemicals That's on nice. some bodies. Yeah, him and Colleen Wing uh, go in to intercept. And then, uh, of course, one of Brandon's favorite characters from the Defenders show so far was one of the guys spraying chemicals. Yeah. You got your homie sitting in the window. Yeah, that, I, I, I didn't get that. Like, that was the most random thing. Like, Luke Cage went to meet this kid to, like, talk to him, and then randomly he just has to be a basketball player gazing out the window. Like, who just sits He's in the window with a basketball? to be something else. <laughs> It was like the most Michael random. How's that random? His his brother and sister were, were just killed. His sister was Why killed. Why does he have a basketball? Why is he holding a basketball? <laughs> that's <what's> random. <laughs> that's the only thing that's but, random. Okay. He's, the only, so, he's just holding a basketball. Uh, he plays ball. Like, what? I don't get it. Why is that so, random? I play, ball. <laughs> I, play, I play varsity basketball through high school. I'm not just sitting around. Yeah, welcome to the podcast. <laughs> I'm a varsity basketball player forever ago. I don't, I don't care. So, that's, like, that's just right. awkward to me. Nauru, in this country, people don't do um, so, wow. What does this have to do with my people my his ball? He, he probably just got back. He's holding his ball. Who knows? I don't know. His brother gave him the no ball. I have no idea what you just yeah. said. He's playing ball. His no brother idea. gave him the ball. Why is that so random to you? I mean, it's just a characterization. Why is someone going into someone's house and killing them and not hanging out and drinking some fucking tea random to you? <laughs> He's holding a basketball. That's random. Going to kill some people and not staying in their house, that's not random. People don't do that. They don't Wait, just are you sleep. talking about hey, the killer? Are you talking here. about the guy who's <laughs> killed? Who talking about, about Kim Run. They're not going to go in there, kill all these people, and sleep in their beds. That would be random. <laughs> it might, though. This guy's just sitting in a room holding a basketball, and that's random. Kung Lung was not a city. Yeah, it's, Kung Lung was their home. They left Kung Lung. The whole thing, they t- started talking about wanting to go back to Kung Lung. All right, back to Jason. Continue. Anyway, so... Clean up oh, crew goes in. Iron I'm Fist is trying to Sorry. intercept. Iron Fist is trying to intercept. Uh, him and Colleen Wing go in. This start bashing heads in. And, of course, Luke Cage steps in because we gotta have a hero he fight. is going to protect that for some reason. Uh, Danny Ran, and for all intents and purposes, Danny Ran would have got his shit punched in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, you should have. <laughs> for sure. Like, he would have died. Uh, seriously? Like, okay, but then he punches Luke Cage in the face, and that fight was. Um, I loved that fight. Dude. Like, it was a good fight. But I loved it. was a very how, realistic fight, too, when you think about it. It was very realistic. I, I liked it because, okay, so uh, we talk about it every week. You know, three of these hosts are actually decent fighters. Not, not the one you're thinking. Not, not that one. Nuru, wherever you are. Oh, uh, so uh, when I fight Tank, Tank is, that's how he earned it. His last name is Tankersley, but I call him Tank every single week because that is what he fights like. That kid is, he can't move him. He's a tank. So when I fight Tank, it's like, gosh, man. And I feel like Iron Fist punching <laughs> again, a power man. Luke and Tank, like, baby. <laughs> nothing, nothing. And you're like, okay, well. Now I've got to figure out how do I hurt this guy? Like, <laughs> so of course I stick him in the eyeballs right. and the pull his hair. Yeah, stick him in the eyeballs, pull his hair. Um, so I really like that. And then when he he hits him with the right hook, uh, that was an awesome scene too. And sent Luke Cage flying across. Yo. Uh, and then I love the interaction. It was it was at the end of the episode where they're actually talking together? Yeah. Uh, because. You know, Luke Cage is, of course, with the night nurse. And she's like, what happened to you? He gives her a kiss, and he's like, oh, my jaw hurts. And she's like, what happened? He's like, 
I got, you know, I got blindsided or something. And she's like, oh, really? Who could hurt you? And he's like, I don't know, some skinny white some kid skinny white with kid. a glowing <laughs> hand. Some skinny white kid with a glowing hand. And she was like, what do you mean glowing hand? There's somebody you need to meet. Yeah, and then yeah. they put him in a room. And that discussion was awesome. But before we break it down and I ask you guys for opinions, I'm going to give my opinion on Luke Cage. So, Luke Cage, the show. I loved it. I loved the first six episodes. But then it turned into a political movement, which we've talked about in the past. I don't want that in my show. When you put these two in the room, it brought all of that right back. When he was in jail, Luke Cage is a wonderful, wonderful, strong character, and I love that dude. Right? He was in jail. And they're like, oh, it looks like all your paper pushing worked. And he, he made it a point to hand them the handcuffs. Like, that was so powerful to me. Like, I could have left a long time ago. Like, you are not holding me here. I was here on my own will. Like, I want to do this the right way. And I was like, hell yeah, that's fucking awesome. But then you get into episode two. Now they're having this conversation. And he starts talking about privilege. You're privileged. You're this. You're that. And it, to me, it just brought back up all of this negative shit. And I was just like, God. And, and I just, I was getting angry at the show. I was like, I, this is what I said I didn't want. I don't want to be reminded of this. Stuff. But a good job because they kept the character from Luke Cage the first season, tied it into the Defenders, but I almost feel like they gave me what I wanted because I feel like Luke Cage is coming to an understanding. Because you can't just have him doing one thing in his series and then be a completely different character in, in The Defenders. So it feels like, you know, by the end of my watching, it feels like he has come full circle. But I do like that they addressed it. That he still had the same theories. He was still a great man. But they were starting to change these things for Luke Cage. So at first I was very, very upset with The Defenders. And I thought they were doing what I didn't want them to do. But then it started to all come around, and I was like, all right, like, this is showing a lot of growth for him. So I feel like the Defenders, and especially episode two, where you're seeing a lot of characters start to intertwine and come together, I feel like there is a lot of growth for these characters in this series. It's not just, oh, this is a, a gang up like the Avengers. The Avengers was just a gang up, a mosh up of, of heroes, and I loved it. But in the Defenders, we actually have character growth. And, and I love that the most about episode two. There was so much growth in this episode for these characters. Um, so, Tank, thoughts on episode two? So, I'll start kind of where you left off. I, I, under, I understand why they had the conversation between Luke Cage and Iron Fist the way they did. Um, because I think a lot of people, me included, have no idea where people like the people that are being portrayed in Harlem come from. Like I have that, that world is totally alien to me. Like I really have no idea. I would, if anything, I would be more like Danny Rand. So I, but, and like you said, they, they hit on it, but they didn't hit us over the head with it, which they did a little bit in Luke Cage's own series, which is fine. Like that's his show to do, to tell his story. Like I get that. And like we said, we didn't want that in Defenders. And they didn't hit us over the head with it, so I'm fine with that. Because at the same time, Danny came to that same understanding. Like he right. kind of he's kind of both, right? He like he grew up, he was rich as a kid, but then he had nothing when he was with the monks. And so it's him kind of finding that balance of like, how do I how how do I what do I do with, with everything that I have? Like I'm more than just the Iron Fist, I'm also, you know, over Rand Enterprises. Like he says, like I own fifty one percent of this major corporation, like how else can I can I fight the hand? So I like that a lot. The fight between Iron Fist, I I loved that fight. I you can ask my wife, I was laughing every time he just like would like strike and then Luke Cage is like just looking at him like, like why what what are you what are you doing? And like he would like kick him and he would just look I was just dying. I was like that's like that was just classic like funny Chinese fighting to me. Like anytime they like they, they do that. It's like a little Chinese man like in um Expendables, right? When he when he's fighting like Dolph Lundgren and he's like all these like strikes and it's like doing nothing to him. That like I was yeah. I was just laughing. Like so season you know episode two I like I, it's kind of it's kind of a slow burn, but the episode two you just see him slowly creeping closer and closer to uh what we'll get to in, in episode three. But 
it's really cool how how it all plays out. I liked how she recognized him off of Skinny White Kid. Like you, you could have left off the glowing yeah. hand, and she's like, oh, okay, no, I hang on, let me, and she just like starts dialing the phone off Skinny White Kid. I'm like that's that's hilarious. Skinny White Kid likes to fight. Yeah, like that. That Wait, was, was it, Brandon? So, Brandon, were uh, you fighting Luke Cage? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I would have got wrecked. Wrecked. So, <laughs> um, but no, it's. I, I feel like episode one was a good start. I felt like episode two gets us to episode three. Like, there's not a whole whole. That's why. That's part of the reason, and we'll say more why in a minute. But uh, I kind of when after watching the first three episodes, I came back to Jason. I was like, no, 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 we need to do the first three episodes because for me, episode two is a lot of getting us to episode three. Um, so I liked I liked it. I definitely liked uh, the Luke Cage, Iron Fist interaction. And at the very, very end, you get uh, Murdoch and Jessica Jones. Um, and I found it interesting that Jessica Jones didn't just rip out of the cuffs too, because she definitely could have. So that was interesting. Yeah. I can't think she would. I actually thought she would. <laughs> yeah, me too. They probably, they probably tried to take where she did and then take where she didn't and thought, well, he did it already, so. Yeah, good. right. <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, Brandon, thoughts? Yeah, uh, I mean, you guys hit most of what I was going to say. I loved the fight. Um, and and uh, going back to Jason said something like why he would, why Luke Cage would try to step in for the kid that was like cleaning up the scene. I think that's like kind of his character. Like, I, like he wants to help people who um, maybe could have, maybe could have helped. Like they maybe could have helped themselves. They could have got a job, but like are lost in where they're coming from or, or what they're doing, and they're trying to find other ways uh, as just means to an end, and the end being to make money, take care of his family, and, and stuff like that. And I think that's part of what makes Luke Cage awesome, in my opinion, is he realizes that these people are doing it the wrong way, and he wants to try to help them do it the correct way, and not necessarily by putting them straight in jail or fighting them or like he said to um, Iron Fist, he was like, oh, yeah, you could have, like, killed him or, or something like that, like, immediately. And he was like, I wasn't going to. Or, something. or he was like, you could have beat him to a pulp. And he was like, I wasn't going to beat him up that bad or something. Um, so, like, I, I think that's cool that, that he did that. Um, and that's how they kind of came together. Because Iron Fist is that just punch everybody kind of thing where it's like, oh, you're on that side where the hand was kind of close to? Well, then you're the enemy. Black um, and white, there's no gray. He, yeah, he's very black and white. Yeah, yeah. I and Luke Cage that, is kind of the one walking the line where he's right. like, I think okay, I understand what you're... Walk the line. Yeah, it's like I understand you're doing something that's technically wrong, but I, I want to try to help you do the correct thing because I know your heart's in the right place or, or, or what you're doing. You want to do well and and in the second season of daredevil he he kind of was there too with the punisher at first he was like black and white you're wrong you're killing people this is wrong but then by the end he was kind of like oh maybe there's other ways to do it that might be better than what i'm doing and stuff like that so uh danny rand is still yeah i love the punisher uh danny rand is still the one who's very much like this is right this is wrong if you're anywhere near the wrong side i'm gonna go after you so i thought that was cool how they met like that um and uh, yeah, I, I thought it was hilarious. It was, it's kind of like a scrawny people with skills. <laughs> they don't have strength. And then the people who like don't really, aren't like, I mean, like Luke Cage could definitely beat me up for sure. Like even if he wasn't ridiculously strong, he could probably still beat me up. He's not like a bad fighter, but he's not like a traditionally trained fighter. Right. You know what I'm saying? He's more of like a street yeah. fighter kind yeah. of. You know, grew up fighting probably type stuff like that. Like that's where his fighting comes from, and more of like Danny and and Daredevil. They like were trained, you know. Right. So it's like I think that's yeah. funny. The two who were like trained really well, they're not strong. The other two who weren't like trained like ninjas, they're just super strong and they're just like punching so everyone. Really cool. Yeah. Like, so that's why it was like it was like Danny versus Luke. It was like really really trained skilled fighter versus someone who you can punch and it doesn't really hurt. So it's like the two extremes going at each other. And I thought that was really cool. Um, Cause it was, it was kind of a standstill. I mean, Danny did like hit him at the end, but right. like you said, Luke, Luke Cage could have just destroyed him the first time he hit him. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I feel I like it was, was really a, cool. like uh, it was almost like a cheap hit. Like, cause Luke Cage didn't even know that he could. And he was that. holding he back. Like Luke Cage was just kind of taking anything. it. Yeah. He wasn't really like. He hold back once Danny, like, 
when Danny turned the fist on, that's what I, I guess I'll call that. But when he actually delivered the right hook, <laughs> the few swings before that, Luke Cage wasn't holding back. Danny was yeah. moving faster than Luke Cage could swing. So yeah, it was that, that that's, train not, versus. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. But like initially yeah. when he was just taking hits and just kind of. Oh, like yeah, he was him, just kind of like. Kind of just like fly you know? swatted him away, you know. Yeah. So I thought, I, thought that was, I thought that was super cool. So, yeah, um, I, I liked it. Naru, before you say something, I want to say that we've gone through three people and none of us have mentioned that Stick came back. I couldn't remember episode which episode two. it was. I don't. I thought I was gonna say it in the. He he, he was introduced in episode two, but in okay. episode three is when I was actually we're probably gonna speaking to the guys. We're probably gonna talk to that. So I was gonna I was gonna ta- I was gonna talk on a bit about Stick, a bit about um how Please you know stay. um Jesse wait, 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 and Hogarth and some other stuff. Stick, Stick doesn't do the most amazing thing until episode three. Yeah. At least I'm that was sure episode three. Yeah, it was episode three where he does. He was introduced like she took the like bag off his head or whatever in yeah. episode two. Yeah, they and when he was introduced, I was like, yeah. yes. Like Stick is one of my favorite characters he's, in this universe. I think I like, saw the dude is he's so sick, man. Yeah. Right, said, so cool. Nuru. Yeah. Right. Um it's kind of a complex um situation here because there's a lot I'm seeing. Like even before we even did this, I saw there's a sequence where um, they took a picture, and you see Danny Rand standing, and you see Luke Cage, and you can see the kid that Danny's trying to beat up for information or you stop, and Luke is trying to save. And that juxtaposition pretty much shows you there's – well, I guess you could say there's politics and everything, and which is kind of fair. And I think, in all honesty, you can't really separate the comic book art form from politics, mainly because a lot of it was born in that – in terms of various forms of satire and making fun of the powers that be and using comedy to tell truth to power and stuff like that, you know, cause um, like take this fellow who just, uh, this gentleman who just died, Dick Gregory, like he's one of those guys who was a comedian and he would say stuff that you had to think about, but he was trying to talk to people at a time when if he said that kind of thing straight, he'd probably get killed. Um, having said that, I feel as though the issue with, people in the story is you can't really separate the separate these people from their environment you can't separate um luke cage from that environment that he's a part of and the predominant problem of these people is something that's going to be addressed and that's why it was addressed in the show and to just push it off and say, oh, that part was just a political statement. Well, yeah, it's something that's part of who they are. They can't, they can't live a day without that being a part of who they are. So it has to come up. Having said that, though, I like the way they used that because I said Luke Cage is the character who's really comfortable in who he is. And he meets Danny Rand. In his eyes, he knows this kid and he sees this kid as a victim of his situation. Danny's just seeing an objective. And this is the thing about Danny Rand. He doesn't really see the people. He sees the situation. And Mm. I think they even alluded to that in Iron Fist. I didn't see this, but in the recap I read, somebody mentioned the fact that Danny's going after all these people with his friend. And these people you're fighting with Bakuto and so on, they're college kids. I mean, these are... They're not super villains. Yeah, yeah. Calm down. You know, these people. Yeah. He's very you know, much like like good versus bad. Like exactly. if you're near yeah, the yeah, hand, yeah, you're bad. Life, exactly. Like, life bad. is more yeah. complex than that. And the same yeah. situation happens right here. He sees these guys dead. These guys come to do cleanup. Doesn't even occur to him that these are not the guys who killed him. You know, so you might want to slow down a bit in terms of how you no. are taking out on these guys. And I don't, no. I'm, not, I'm not blaming him for that. My point is it doesn't occur to him that right. that might, not, might be the situation because he goes right after them. And well, Luke shows up and all Luke they, sees is, okay, this guy's trying to beat up this kid. This kid did something stupid. So the juxtaposition there, which in a way I guess is kind of political, Luke sees the black kid as a person. Danny sees this guy as, as you know, the perpetrator. Bad guy. And he just goes right after him. Now, having said that, though, I love the way Luke brings Danny down to earth. He, tell, he calls him out on his privilege. And I like the fact that they didn't go and get heavy-handed with it and say, you're white privilege. They didn't do that. They said, you're privilege. And he tells him straight up, you're a billionaire. And that's another thing that was bugging me. Dude is having nightmares and worrying about how he's, you know, all this stuff. And for me, all I'm seeing is, dude, you're in a private jet. Who, 
you're in a private jet flying back from your latest mission. You don't have to worry about how to get there. You just jump into a private jet, fly back, fly there. You have so much ability and power. And that's what, you know, pretty much you see uh, Luke calls him out on. Like, dude, you had so much power. You could change the world even before you had the glowy hand and stuff, which I thought was pretty smart because it forces Danny to realize that there are other ways I could do this. Yeah. And these people are more complex than just punch them and get the truth. Having said that, Danny's next approach to solving the problem is hilarious. <laughs> punch him and get the <laughs> Like, put on the suit and go punch him. But anyway, that's, se- that's separate. But the point is, um, you can see the way they bring all these different situations. And the juxtaposition of these two, for me, was pretty good. Because I think, and I said this before, I think they should have done the Iron Fist show and had Luke in there. Because it would have been much better. I like him of- better with other characters. True. Yeah. And I love the fight as well because the truth of the matter, is it shows the different things. It's a really realistic fight. The, the super skilled guy is trying to hit pressure points or whatever and do his thing. And Luke is impervious to all that stuff. And Luke fights like a guy who knows he's impervious. Every time somebody right. cocks a gun and starts shooting, Luke goes, oh, he, man. Yeah, he just exhales. He is ex- literally, that's what he does. Oh, he ex- exhales and stands there. So you're throwing punches at me. Luke literally just stands there and takes it. And he's trying to tell him, stay down. Don't let me hurt you. So he's actually arrogant till the light fist punches him in the face. And he goes, what? <laughs> yeah. So I love the, the, the humor and the fact that they're still bringing these guys together. It was very, for me, it was real. It was organic. It was natural. I felt that was true. And like you said, yeah, it leads up to episode three. Um, but nobody mentioned Jessica Jones here. And I want to bring something up about her because... They continue to show, I I wasn't sure why, when she's investigating the story, why does um, Hogarth show up? Like, how does Hogarth know she's going to be there? You know, she's so quick. Pretty much. Like, what is it with Hogarth? Why are you so into Jessica (laughs) Jessica Jones? Why are you so, every single time she's doing something you think she shouldn't be doing, you're showing up. Well, it's like, almost, it's almost like she feels responsible, like, or she, like, she wishes she could help Jessica because, like, she knows. I'm beginning to wonder, is there some kind of link between them? Is there some kind of relationship here going on? Is she related to her in some way? Is there a a filial relationship? What is it that you're not telling us that makes Hogarth leave her office? This is a top lawyer. They don't just, you don't just leave your office and head out into the middle of some little crime scene for no reason. She could have sent anybody, but she shows up herself in person. I feel like they're trying to, lay the foundation for something else that we don't know yet. Pretty much, I guess. I'm just throwing that out there. Jessica Jones, season two. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it's going. Uh, so, episode three. Just like Nuru's attitude, this is going to be all worst behavior. All right. So the name of the episode is Worst Behavior. This episode is the episode that Tank immediately told me, hey, I know that you said we're going to do two episodes, but I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to sneak another episode and trust me, you want to do that too. So and I said, if, yep. you only watched, if you only watched the first two episodes, right now is when you're going to want to go ahead and cut. Um, and this is going to be a full review and spoilers for episode three. But if you only watch two episodes, I highly recommend you go back and watch this one. Do not listen to our review until after you've seen it. But it is a good one and you shouldn't have missed it. Uh, you shouldn't listen to us and base your viewing off of our show. Or maybe you can. Whatever. So, episode three, Worst Behavior. Uh, it opens up, and uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on. The hand is still moving in. Sigourney Weaver is still being a villain. Danny Rand. Danny Rand. Danny Rand. Uh, Danny Rand. Uh, he is telling Colin Wing that he has to go through, and he's figuring out who the hand is, and um, who they actually work for. Uh, Jessica Jones follows Daredevil. Yeah. Actually, Daredevil follows Jessica Jones, and then Jessica Jones ends up following Daredevil. Which I'm so confused on how she did that. I'm not 100%. Like, he was, like, listening to her to She her changed footsteps. her footsteps. Yeah, she changed up her footsteps. And how? Her and then, like, go a block behind him immediately. How did but, she, I well, think she first just of all, she could, moving she, off to the side. Well, first of all, don't forget, Jessica Jones is capable. I think they've shown her do that. She can leap from standing position right uh, up to the yeah. top of a building. That's true. So she could pretty much just 
and he's his brain would probably not compute that she just did that. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, does. he keeps yeah. going, and then she just jumps back down, just continues following. So it's entirely yeah, possible she did that. I was very, com- I was like, did she run around the block like super fast? Yeah, I was. That's what I was saying. Was I, 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 I literally thought she jumped straight up. I don't know why. Yeah, that makes the most sense. Thought. Yeah, I thought that yeah, was that makes pretty awesome. awesome. How she got in behind him and then took pictures of him. Yeah. And then when she addressed it later, <laughs> how does a blind man maneuver like that? I've got pictures. So he just smashes that shit. <laughs> he just smashes <laughs> yeah, like, like digital cameras don't have like like. She probably already put it on her computer. Yeah, right. Was it yeah. Was it Listen, it I know you pretty much met, don't like, like Jessica Jones, but she's one of the strongest parts of this series. And here's why. First of she, all, she's bringing stuff together for sure. She's, oh, she's a good, yeah. She's here's a good here's link the thing. In the chain. Not only is she, not only is she, you know, has her powers and everything, but she's a very compelling character and enjoyable to actually watch. Here's the thing. Like for example, I like the fact that they actually show off her ability to use her smarts in this. Mm-hmm. You know, one, two, three. Like, yeah. uh, although she did need some help from Malcolm, <laughs> when bit, she's yeah. about to give up, and he's like, "Well, did you reverse check the number?" She goes, "Oh, come on, he's not gonna." Well, what if he's not an expert? What if he's not like you? And she goes, "Oh, yeah, he might be a, yeah, he might be a what's the word? Amateur or something." That's the word. She might be an amateur, and she checks, and she pulls off the be- most beautiful <laughs> ditzy babe. Yes, I have a police report. You want to jump <laughs> And she, <laughs> yeah. Gets the information right funny. away. She, you can see that she uses her smarts and she can get information pretty quick. She's pretty good yeah. in her job as a PI. I think I think the she's kind of like Danny Rand well. for me, where it's like where it's like her playing off of like the like how Daredevil's character is like dealing with stuff in the third in the third episode, and like them together. Kind of like in the second episode was like uh, Luke Cage was kind of like bringing up Danny's character to me, like kind of building oh, it yeah, up yeah. and help. Their interaction made me like Danny more. Even though I didn't hate Danny Rand, um, I'm like the only person who didn't hate Danny Rand. <laughs> but well, I, like, I didn't it, it hate made Danny Rand. It, it made me enjoy his character more. Um, that same thing with with Jessica Jones, and I don't think it's necessarily only. It's not necessarily only the scenes that they're together in. It's how that how that storyline was going. So it's like kind of yeah. what he was doing, and kind of what she was doing, and how it was like. They're not doing the same thing, but it was like kind of playing off of like the feeling of the other scene is what made me really enjoy her, especially in in the third episode. I think she, uh, outside of the fight scenes, she stole the third episode for me. Um, like she, her character, uh, like as as like a coming up character, and like how it was like really digging deep into how she was going through stuff, and like he said, she was using other tactics to try to. Uh, like persuade people into giving her information and stuff like that. I, like I thought that was super sweet. You know? Yeah, I will give Jessica Jones that. Everyone on Earth knows that I am not a Jessica Jones fan, <laughs> but this show did make me feel more in tune with that character. Um, now, does that mean I'm going to go back and watch her series? Hell yeah. no. You should. No, it doesn't. <laughs> But yeah, I think I'm gonna watch I've all seen, of them. I've seen all the way some. Again. I've seen some of her series enough to introduce Purple Man, and I understand what's going along. Wikipedia, but <laughs> this episode, I, I will agree with Brandon. Uh, besides the fight and all that, I will say that episode three was Jessica Jones episode. Uh, it created a a caring for this character for me, where I'm like, oh, okay, I actually give a shit what she's doing. And it just kind of built on this character and just kind of kept going from there. Um, you don't I just want to say lot. that by agreeing with Brandon, you're kind of agreeing with me, too. So I, <laughs> That's the first. I, know. <laughs> I, I, I think the only time I've ever agreed with you, Nauru, is when somebody held up a blue pen and said, is this a red pen? And we both said, no. I think that's the only time you and I have ever agreed. I think I said, yeah. Um, but... <laughs> but um, in episode three, I will say that Jessica Jones kind of took this one away. Um, there wasn't much to do with Luke Cage. Uh, you know, there was the whole him going to the jail and getting that information and the lottery tickets. And, you know, he's still showing off. He's still showcasing like that in nature. Like he's still a very good person. He wants to do right by the community. He wants to do these things. Um, and and he's just trying to show that. And uh, you know, Daredevil, he is all right. He's Daredevil. So of course Daredevil is always gonna be awesome. 
And then Iron Fist, you get the uh, him and Colleen Wing. And Danny Rand, I'm going to do it by myself. <laughs> yeah. And that is Brandon, where he says, and with Rand Industries, I own 51%. <laughs> <laughs> you do yeah, get the at Danny the, Rand uh, at the desk. Yeah. Yeah, at the desk. I don't think it was as bad as upstairs. the first season. It wasn't. It wasn't. But it was still there. That's what I'm saying. As an actor, he's learning how to be Danny Rand. Yeah. <laughs> and not sound like that. <laughs> you can just say, yeah, I'm, I'm Danny Rand. Uh, I own 51% yeah, I of uh, Rand Enterprises. <laughs> so then we go upstairs. Danny starts to uh, introduce himself. And Sigourney Weaver comes in. Thoughts on this? Thoughts on this little little segment, this little exchange that Danny mega and Sigourney impressive. have. It was mega impressive. It was, it was oh my god! It was mega. I, I love the fact that he walks in, the whole table is there, and he's like, "I'm Danny Rand. I know you're the hand. I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna fix this. You know, basically, you guys are screwed." And then you just see like these hands, just like real soft, and you're just like. Oh, it's about shit. to go like, down. Yeah, and Sigourney Weaver's like, hi, Daniel Rand. Oh, I know who you are. Blah, 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 blah. And he's like, no, who are you? Oh, I'm the boss. I'm in charge. Like, oh, no. She goes, I'm in charge. Yeah, I'm... And then she just sits down at the head of the table, and you're just like, she doesn't even she sit at the head of the table. She sits on the head of the table. She sits on the table. She sits on the table like a mom talking to a petulant child. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was go great. on. Like that, that exchange oh. right there was my favorite Sigourney Weaver part. Because it was just like, yeah, the gal part. The, her training Electra, which also happens in episode three. Which is why I was confused. Yeah. Because Electra was super badass in episode two. But then she gets trained in episode three. No, it was a flashback. Which I know is a time lapse. Yeah. yeah. I know it was a flashback, but it was super confusing because it's That's like... Weird. It's it's a little jumpy. Uh, Not really. Yeah, I mean, they really start bad. off by showing her dead. They, they literally start off showing... Um, well, I, yeah, I knew it was a calling flashback. Her, then, her name is Alexandra in the show. Gosh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she, she, she hears that she's dead. And she goes, we got to get her. And we go get her. And they bring her body, and then they do the thing and bring her back to life. So that's where they start yeah. off. So you know it's a flashback. Yeah, but it was it was, but it was confusing for me because I watched episode two, and then the next day I watched episode three. So uh, then when yeah. I was watching episode three, I was going, "Well, was that even Electra in episode two? Uh, like, yeah, yeah. But I thought, but I thought the, okay. and like, the whole oh, best okay. part of the flashback was like Electra was all like feeble and stuff, and she like sat up, she's like ah, and then she's like kind of shaking, and then it was. It panned to a different uh, thing, and then she just somehow like like flew out of the container. Yeah, that was, it was like <laughs> Anna Ball. I knew somebody she was like Anna Ball, and then like landed on the floor. And I, I was like, "Wait, did you jump out, or did it eject?" <laughs> no, nah, it was alien. Oh, here's the dude. best part. She <laughs> alien. Check it out. Check it out. First of all, she jumps out of all that liquid, and nothing flows with her on the floor. Okay, that's interesting. And then Secondly, she gets up, and then it's on the floor. It's like, Secondly, <laughs> are you trying to tell me she was comatose, and her hands independently reached up and opened the thing? Oh, dude, that was and so funny. That was. So and then she can't stand money. up afterwards. It's like you're so strong, and you jump out with like Olympian strength <laughs> to be jumped at, like not even no. extended. Just jump out like this. Oh, like, you can yeah. jump without extending any of your like, <laughs> ball. Yeah. Like, she was like a little side cannonball. Why well, like, is just, just cracked weird. up I, laughing? That's where, in that case, that's where style kind of beats logic for me. Why didn't they just have somebody open right. it and have, and have her open her eyes and scream and jump out? Okay, that makes sense to me. No, no, not but, even jump out. Like she should have pulled it out. Yeah, like just, just slide out. out, of out of it. Right. More out. Hey, I'm cool me. with her jumping out, but there's no way she calmly opens it and then lays back in the water and then jumps out. Like, yeah. No, <laughs> no to me, I don't the, think she does any out, of that if she's. Like, She's she was atrophied. supposed to be falling, and in my right. mind, when it happened, I was trying to like come up with a time where it's like, oh no, 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 I've totally slipped and been like completely in the air, and then moved myself eight feet. Like I was, <laughs> nope, never happened. You know the whole <laughs> like, show. I was trying, I was trying, but it was just like, <laughs> <laughs> out of everything like, in the show that doesn't make any like, like, <laughs> yep. It doesn't make sense to like the laws of physics. This is the one thing that I just was like, how did this happen? (laughs) What is exactly, right? 
<laughs> out of yes. everything, like people just what? taking bullets and like right, yeah, just random stuff. All right, so Daredevil yeah. flipping yeah. over everything us out of this rabbit hole because this, this is already yeah, going to be a long episode. Yeah. We're just it's just yeah. going to be long. There's nothing we can do about it. What I thought was cool. Well, about, that's why I'm trying to wrap it up into this. Right, right. So what I thought was cool about the Electra thing. So we we find out in episode one, Sigourney Weaver, Alexandra Naru, uh, is is right. dying. Right. We find out in episode two that she's like old as dirt, and then we find out in episode three they're like, "This is the last of the resources to bring Electra back." So whatever oh. they've been doing to bring Electra back, that's what they've been doing to keep bringing Alexander back, and she gives that up to bring back Electra. That's how important <laughs> this character is exactly. to Alexander. I nice. thought that was really nice. really cool for somebody who obviously yeah. not dying has been the most important thing in her life to give that up for. Uh, Electra's character is kind of scary. What they're trying to do with her, yeah, they'll they'll All explain right. a lot of that later on. It pays off, but uh, um, also I like the fact that because they show us that she's in episode one, um, you can see that she's super powerful for some reason. She oh, has Electra. lots of authority. And episode two, like you said, they show us that she's pretty old. She's been around. She's actually discussing intricacies of, of Beethoven and Constantinople and all. I'm yeah. like, Okay, and then episode three, she got some skills. Like Electra yeah. comes at her, and she goes, she just flips her over, like, yeah, yeah stop it. Well, she, she, she at least has been so, on one, so there's yeah. more training. Well, that's the so point. They show us that into, she's really badass. Right. Let's get into a part that I thought was awesome. After all the training, Electra, Sigourney Weaver, Naru, <laughs> Sigourney Weaver goes and threatens Stick. Oh, tell yeah. us, you know, what where the hand and is. He tell us this. You will die here tonight. Alex And what did Stick do? Cut his he cut that hand, hand off, off. bruh. And Stick then punches her with awesome. his stuff. Anybody else think it was really impressive? Oh, yeah, he, 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 he disarms the black star. <laughs> yeah. That was awesome, dude. And, and he, he ran all amazing. pretty quick. Yeah, he so, ran all the way to uh yeah. to, oh, what's okay. her names? So so yeah. so here's another thing. Just like Electra. Falling out of that little tomb. Did anybody else look at that and go, stick? Who's undone with one hand if you're holding Bruh. something? In like a fraction of a second, yeah. Yeah, like, uh, no, you have two hands, more believable. But it's already 20 feet in the air. You jumped. <laughs> you only have one good hand and a, st- and a stub, and you've had no time to train with this nub. Yeah. Like, Okay, so that like whole how, scene was well, just how old is right? Stick, right? We know Alexandra is super old. True, we know, uh, no one knows. And we know Stick we know. recognized her. So Stick's got to be but, ridiculously old, too. So that's... Or he just has met her multiple times right. in his... But he does know more about the Iron, <laughs> the Iron Fist. Right, yeah. yeah so he exactly that, that is a thing. He knows about the Iron Fist. Yeah. He knows about all these individuals. Um... So let's get into the meat and potatoes. The reason that we all watched episode three, <laughs> the thing that we've all been waiting to talk about, the gunshot that Danny Rand, pow, Brock <laughs> triggered Daredevil, and then created one of, I think, the best fight scenes uh, in the Netflix series, minus Daredevil season one hallway fight. That's true, yeah, you can't beat that. You can you will kind of had it kind of had close. some of the same yeah it, it kind of had some of the same like aspects of it right it was it. cool it was cool and like the how like the camera how it was like a single shot coming back and like that was yeah. super cool I like they that. kept doing so this filmed really thing. well everybody though everybody who walks down the hallway single camera you walk past the camera they turn around the camera doesn't follow you though it waits till you're gone down the hall and then flips I'm like oh okay yeah. <laughs> pretty I cool like it was how... just go ahead tank so I like how. We you know we talked about like in the last episode like how Danny Rand is like a super trained fighter and having fought Luke Cage once and having talked to him once knew as soon as he saw the guys with the guns he immediately knew to get down behind Luke Cage like it, he didn't like I, I he didn't hesitate that. didn't I think about that. it like he knew exactly what he had to do to stay alive I thought that was really cool it and then Luke Cage just kind of smirked dynamic, at him was yeah. like yeah that's right I just saved it, it, it was a, right. it was a good dynamic like yeah. I liked that. Like, the, the bullet started flying. He tucked down. Luke Cage kind of gave a smirk. But he also had, like, that look on his face. Like, yeah, this is what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah. And then immediately after the gunfire, went back in. 
yep. and you know started attacking again, which I thought was great. And then in comes Daredevil with Jessica Jones' scarf on. <laughs> I hated that. You look that like an awesome. asshole. Yeah, he looks awesome. your scarf. <laughs> I hated it. Dude, I love I that hated line. It. I love he it. Lo- he did I look like the asshole. line is cool, but I hate so how he funny. looked. <laughs> it looks so I actually good. liked how it looked. It was kind of realistic. Like, dude, I need something I, like, to I feel like a lot and- of... I'm going to be one of very few that don't like how it looks. <laughs> you are definitely one of Dude, I love the vigilante look yeah. where he had all the black on. No, the black the was dope. But it was no, a throwback. I like that. This was a throwback to that, and it was pretty cool. A little bit. Um, yeah. Something else I, I noticed, though, and this is this just goes to show again where the characters are in their situation. Like Daredevil is still so bound by this whole "I can't let people know who I am" thing. Everybody else has no issues with this. I mean, Danny Rand doesn't give a rip what you think of him. I'm famous. In fact, Daredevil's the only secretive person on the crew. That's Everybody true. else is famous. Jessica Jones is famous. She's been on the news. Luke Cage is famous. He's been on the news. They recognize him on the street. He uses that to his advantage. He goes looking for the kid. He shows his face. Everybody goes, oh, yeah, he's upstairs. That's where he is. So it, it's kind of nice for me to see that they're staying true to this dynamic of their characters through the whole show. Um, Jessica Jones doesn't really care. I walk into the building. I came to ask some questions. Who do I need to talk to? Daredevil shows up, tries to pull her out, and he hears the gunshot. And this part for me is a bit, a bit weird. Like, how the heck does Luke Cage get up there? <laughs> you know, the whole, like, <laughs> Luke Cage, man. <laughs> they just show Luke. I'm like, okay. Now, I know I <laughs> showed how the others got there, but he yeah. was just there. Just like, Danny up. walks in there. And by the way, we met something about this. Notice how when Danny's showing up to the place, there's not only are they expecting him, they actually take the time to set up a full trap. Like, he thinks he's walking into a boardroom. But everybody there's a fighter in a suit. Like yeah. there's nobody there who's actually an executive in this company. So so bottom line for me, I like the fact that they stay true to their characters in the show and this part. And the fights, they use that also in the fights. Like the fight was awesome. I don't know why you're trying to say it's not as good. For me, it was as good as the hallway fight scene. No, it's, just, the, you, the it's hard to say you follow it, but yeah. The hallway fight scene in Daredevil was just so much better to me personally because it wasn't multiple fighting styles. It was one. Yeah. And I honestly think the fight choreography in that one was a lot better because they were, you know, I have researched that fight and they were trying to show he is a trained fighter, but at this point he's still developing. Yeah. Like he is not a professional at this point. So it shows him hitting the walls, falling back and forth, falling, like getting thrown through a door and then fighting his way back in. This one was more... A little more refined, kind of. It, it was more refined. Just because it's more refined it, doesn't they, mean they it's are better. better. It's still, there's a, there's no, 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 a story no. in the fight. It, there was, but also the way it was filmed. right? Yeah. Like The way that the Daredevil one was filmed, the lights were flickering, it was dark, it was like this dirty... Feel, this one was Wait, in all, all white building. About this? The single hallway or the one that goes down the stairs as well? No, season one. Ooh, the, the downstairs one was cool, but the single hallway. It was awesome. Yeah, the down the stairs, hallway. I That's forgot that one. That one was cool, too. I love the fact that the guys who were doing the fights were actually running down and jumping into the fights again to continue showing more people. Yeah. That was pretty awesome. So this was awesome. It led to a fight where Daredevil actually ends up fighting Elektra. Yeah. But, no, but he doesn't realize it's Elektra. Yeah, yeah he doesn't realize it's Electra. He said it's someone. No, it's something. Something is coming our way. Then he realizes it's Electra after she throws his ass through a plate glass window. <laughs> a couple times, dude. He, he gets thrown. I think it was when she exhales. She, she beats the shit out of him. She, it's like she exhales. It was her breathing, was her breathing pattern. Yeah. Her he breathing goes, pattern, he heard and he realized it was Electra at yeah. that point. Right. But when she was coming up, he was like, something she, is heading our way. Did she recognize her name for a second, though? You, she, it, it looked I feel like, like she, she did. Yeah. It looked like she recognized it for that split second. Yep. And then they all then got the away. brainwashing kicked back in. Yeah. Yeah. So then it ends with all of them getting in the elevator. <laughs> the doors and, closed. uh, yeah, wait, wait, what was the, where, where did you guys come from or who are you guys? Yeah, who are you guys? And then the doors close and the episode ends. So, and, uh, that, that was a good episode. For me. I, I have I have one nitpick thing. I want to see if you guys see the same thing or have the same nitpick. Do you guys and and I don't I don't remember feeling this way in Daredevil season one and two. Do do you guys feel very Ben Afflecky when he hears when he's using his hound? He's very uh, 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 
Like, <laughs> his head's very twitchy when he's doing the listening thing, and unfortunately, it makes me think of the Ben Affleck version. Like, I don't, I don't, I didn't get that from him in, in season one and two, but for some reason, every time we're supposed to notice him hearing something, his head's very twitchy. And it's very. Oh, let me put my let me put my ear a little bit closer, even though I have supersonic hearing. Like, I don't know. I did anybody else feel that way, or is that just me? Just I didn't pick up on it, but now I'll definitely now notice it. <laughs> I'll say I'm this: no, in, like, in, episode, in episode two, at the beginning, I was a little distracted by it, but I let it go because I thought, okay, an earthquake just went off. This guy sure. hears everything. He must be going through a sensory overload. Oh right no, for now. sure. No, so he's trying to go like, but in you know, he's trying three, to filter through everything. When he hears the so, gunshot, that's when it really killed me. It was like when he hears the gunshot and like it zooms to me, in. It was on just him turning his head, like. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. So it, he wasn't twitchy there. He was twitchy. It wasn't, it wasn't weird. He was twitchy at the beginning okay. of it. It was just too. me, and that's that's perfectly okay. But it was, just, it was weird for me. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying I noticed it, it, but I thought it was justifiable in episode two. You're all going to see it now. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tank. Ben Affleck. Hey guys. Dang. <laughs> we are not ending ours on Ben Affleck. So. <laughs> ben Affleck it's Batman. Though. Ben Affleck Batman yeah, is like that, bad. All right, guys. So that about wraps it up for this week. Those are our thoughts on the Defenders, episodes one through three. Tank, tell them where they can find you, bud. Hey, thank you guys for sticking around on this. Definitely going to be a long episode. Uh, if you guys can find me on uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, at The Caped Critic. Thank you guys so much. We have a lot. We have a lot of really cool stuff planned over the next over the coming weeks. Uh, so keep up with our social media. We'll, we'll start. We'll, we will give you guys um, some heads up where it's going to be at. Thank you guys for showing up this week. All right, Naru. Hey, yo, you can find me on Twitter at N U R U J A Y, Naru J. Peace. Brandon. Yeah, you can find me on all the social media at B Miller425. If you made it this far, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, and you can find me at Houdini0333. Hey, you can find all of us on YouTube. Uh, you can find us on where else? YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes. You, all of that is going to be the nerds from work. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram because they don't like the word the at nerds from work. Hey, please comment, like, subscribe on YouTube. Uh, please leave a review. Those things really do help us on iTunes. I like to be a control freak, and I actually cannot control iTunes. So by leaving comments and reviews, you guys actually help us out a lot. Um, you give us good feedback and stuff like that. If you guys have questions, comments, concerns, bitches, moans, complaints, please send them to Nuru's personal email. <laughs> Which is? <laughs> but, but if you want to hear anything about the show, please comment, subscribe, whatever. Send your questions to us. We'll try to answer it in our next episode at the Nerds from Work at gmail.com. Hey, from all of us here at work, peace. Do a lullaby.